This is um, William Fry. He was a conscientious objector during the Vietnam War. Hi. Hi. Um, how old were you when you learned about the Vietnam War, and where were you living at the time? Well, I think when I really started to learn about the Vietnam War, I was um, pretty much uh, already graduated from college, and I was in graduate school at, at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. Okay. And so I would have been probably uh, somewhere between 22 and um, 27, somewhere in the in years of age, somewhere in that time period. And you wouldn't have been safe from, um, if you, as I recall, if you were in school at the time, you could avoid the draft through being a student. Right. So you could have a student deferment, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure that I had for a while, mm -hmm. but it was one of those things where the, the laws were changing and mm -hmm. uh, at some point I would not have been, I would not have had the student deferment at some point. Okay. Um, did your grandparents or parents or relative take part in a previous war and did this influence your opinion on war? And Definitely. Um, my um, father uh, and uh, most of the people in his generation um, mm -hmm. were in World War II. Okay. And um, I would say that they, um, those people who had been in World War II were generally not uh, supportive of someone uh, protesting a, a war. Right. It's your duty. You should go do it. Right. Right. They felt like the government knew best, mm -hmm. the president knew best, and um, if they called you to do something and fight in a war, then you should just go do it. That was your patriotic duty. Um, my mother, on the other hand, I think had a different attitude about it, but um, I think she was opposed to the war. But I think that I came to the decision of being a conscientious objector pretty much without a lot of influence from my parents. Um, about when did you file to be a conscientious objector? Um, I, was, um, I was in graduate school and I remember that um, around this time the U.S. had, um, of course we had been in the Vietnam War for a while, mm -hmm. and um, we had invaded um, Cambodia, I believe, was around the time when I decided to become a conscientious objector. I was already opposed to the war. Mm -hmm. um, I was already, I think, um, actually doing some public speaking out against the war. I remember giving a lecture at the graduate school about how the U.S. got involved in the Vietnam War and about why it was really a bad idea politically and uh, how the, the war was not really justified. It wasn't a war of self-defense, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> what's the process of um becoming and filing to be a conscientious objector like? Well, first of all, um, it was not a very popular thing to do. Um, I think there were a lot of people who were opposed to the Vietnam War, but um, uh, even some of those people who were opposed to it simply went into the military when they were drafted mm -hmm. and uh, did their best probably to avoid going to Vietnam. Uh, some of them, however, did not succeed and ended up in Vietnam. Uh, some people decided to go to Canada, but that was not easy either yeah. because then you became sort of a, uh, a, an outlaw, so to speak, you know, and then being able to come back from Canada was tough too. Some people actually just went to jail, refused to go and went to jail. That obviously was not an easy option. Uh, some people tried to get out with medical reasons, you know, and they would pretend to be crazy. I had a roommate who did that hmm. uh, successfully pretended to have a mental disorder and was essentially eliminated from the draft because of that. But, um, so to become a conscientious objector, you had to object on the basis of your religion. And it couldn't just be because you thought this was an unjust war or because you didn't agree with the politics of the war. So I had to, um, being Jewish, I had to uh, uh, come up with a a justification for why I could not fight in the war because I was Jewish and how it was against my religion. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you were a Quaker, they pretty much accepted 
that you would be a conscientious objector, and I don't think they caused, uh, I don't think it was much of a fight. Because, Why is that? Well, Quakers, or the Friends, as they are, you know, it's mm -hmm. called, um, are just known to be uh, a religion of nonviolence and a religion of pacifism. And so I think that pretty much being a Quaker meant that you would not, would not fight in a war. Whereas if you were Jewish or any other religion, the question was not that obvious. So someone might say, well, look at the state of Israel. It's a, presumably a Jewish state, and yet they're involved in all kinds of wars. So how can you say that war is inconsistent or participation in war is inconsistent with Judaism? So I had to basically, uh, I had to write a document. I remember it was about maybe six or seven type pages, um, which stated why I couldn't fight in war because I was Jewish. And then of course I would also, I also went and got people that knew me uh, like this rabbi at the uh, temple in Atlanta, where, which was the synagogue that I went to, who would then write some letter in support of my position. Uh, and where do you send that? Well, you have to, um, you have to send it to the uh, draft board mm -hmm. um, or to the selective service. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I, uh, I wrote this document, and it was based on the fact that, you know, the entire time I was growing up, whenever I would go to Jewish services or whenever I, we would have Jewish holidays, there were always prayers about peace. Mm -hmm. Grant us peace, thy most precious gift, O thou eternal source of peace, and enable Israel to be its messenger unto the world. Mm -hmm. Now when they said that in these prayers, remember these prayers are thousands of years old, they weren't talking about when they said Israel, they weren't talking about the state of Israel, there was no such thing. They were talking about meaning Israel meaning the Jewish people. So peace or shalom was supposed to be this, you know, very high ideal that you were supposed to strive for. And so right away, you could start your argument on that basis and say, well, you know, we're supposed to be working towards peace. I um, knew that in the Talmud, which is um, not really part of the Bible, but it's another Jewish book of laws, that um, it said that if the governor of your town tells you to go and kill someone, and if you refuse to do it, they will kill you, that you must allow yourself to be killed, that you must not go out and kill that other person. And so that seemed like a fairly good analogy to mm -hmm. the U.S. government telling me I had to go kill Vietnamese, drop napalm on them, or uh, blow them up, or whatever else it is that, that you know we were doing at the time. Uh, carpet bomb them, uh, bomb them back to the Stone Age, as General LeMay once said we were doing, or he, he 